Welcome back. All right, I want to talk about Vegas today. Yep, I want to talk about the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, looking at last year, where they win the Stanley Cup, looking at this year, where they don't look like they're going to repeat, but it's interesting to go through the numbers. So I wanted to go through this because there, there are some fascinating similarities between this year's team and last year's. They're just not getting the results they got last year. So uh, they currently sit one point behind the LA Kings. Very likely they either play Dallas or Edmonton in the first round. Now, if you're a Vegas fan, if you're an Edmonton fan or a Dallas fan, you know uh, those are teams that have played against each other before. Where uh, when Vegas went through and won the Stanley Cup last year, they went through Edmonton, they went through Dallas. So Vegas is familiar with both teams. Both teams are familiar with Vegas. It doesn't feel like Vegas is the same as last year. When you look at the record, well, last year they were 51-22-9. This year they're 42-28-8. They still have a few games left, of course. Should make the playoffs, and I say should because they're three points clear of the playoff line. And I've I've seen, the, you know, last night I mentioned, you know, could St. Louis pull it off? And immediately people are like, nah, nah, it's impossible. But, I, you know, you just never know. Until it's mathematically done, you just never know. Um, Eichel led them in scoring last year. 67 games, 27 goals, 39 assists, 66 points. He's been remarkably consistent when he's played this year as well. 59 games, 29 goals, 34 assists, 63 points. Eichel is still a dynamic player when he plays. Uh, the trick is to make sure he's playing, he's healthy, and everything's good, right? Uh, with Eichel, I, I don't know if we'll ever see him play an 82-game schedule again. We shall see. Uh, the second leading scorer last year was Chandler Stevenson. 81 games, 16 goals, 49 assists, 65 points. Interestingly enough, his scoring is down, but only from an assists perspective. 73 games, he's actually got the same amount of goals as last season with 16. 31 assists, 47 points. He's an unrestricted free agent this summer. Uh, we'll see with that drop in points if maybe it saves him a few dollars on keeping him around. Uh, Marsh so last year, 76 games, 28 goals, 29 assists, 57 points. He's had a remarkable run this year, 78 games, 41 goals, 26 assists, 67 points. So for Jonathan Marsh so it has been just a, a, a remarkable year. I, I don't know how many times I'm going to say remarkable in this video. Maybe do a counter. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I would do one and have it on the screen, but I, I don't really do that. Uh, Riley Smith, who of course is no longer with the team last year, 78 games, 26 goals, 30, 30 assists, 56 points. His replacement, Ivan Barbashev, uh, because they had to choose. You either sign Barbashev and keep him or you keep Riley Smith. Well, Barbashev this year, 78 games, 18 goals, 26 assists, 44 points. So Barbashev could get to 20 goals. He's not scoring as much as Riley Smith last year, but it's not a huge drop off overall. Uh, last year, Petrangelo was amongst the top six scorers. 73 games, 11 goals, 43 assists, 54 points. He'd be right there again, other than an injury that took him out for a while. Uh, last year, William Carlson, 82 games, 14 goals, which was low. Uh, 39 assists, 53 points. This year, his goal totals have got better. 66 games, 27 goals, 29 assists, 56 points. So a better overall season for William Carlson. And then, of course, there's the Mark Stone question, right? Um, right away, and I've, I've seen it, and, and I, you know what? I used to watch WCW, so that, that meme you see of the wrestler sitting there with his leg out, and he's got the towel over himself, and he's sitting in the wheelchair, and then he pulls off the towel, and you find out that's a fake leg, and he's fine. Yeah, I know where that comes from. That's Kevin Nash. Uh, one of the few things in WCW that was entertaining at the time. So, uh, 43 games for Stone last year, 17 goals, 21 assists, 38 points. This year, Stone was actually having a better year than last year. 56 games, 16 goals, 37 assists, 53 points. I have said it before. I'll say it again. Um, I, I think that part of the struggle this team has had is without Mark Stone. I think that Mark Stone is one of the better two-way forwards in the game. And when he's out of the lineup, it, it is noticeable in the Vegas Golden Knights results. Definitely noticeable in their defensive play. Um, I, I just, I think a lot of Mark Stone. I think he's fantastic. And the fact that people get so upset. The people are like, ah, it's abuse of LTR. People understand just how good Mark Stone is. Otherwise, I don't think they'd care nearly as much. I know that the, the whole salary cap thing upsets people, but still. Last year after at the trade deadline, they picked up Barbashev. 23 games, 6 goals, 10 assists, 16 points. They picked up Teddy Bluger from Pittsburgh. 18 games, 2 goals, 4 assists, 6 points. And he really solidified that fourth line. Uh, and then Jonathan Quick was a really good story for them too. He went 5-2-2 two, two with a 901 save percentage for them in the regular season. Uh, this year, Mantha, 16 games, 3 goals, 6 assists, 9 points. Not producing as well as Barbashev last year, but uh, again, not every player adjusts right away as well as Barbashev did. Barbashev just fit right in. 
Uh, Hannafin, 16 games, 2 goals, 7 assists, 9 points. He's provided them with some solid offense on the blue line. Puck started going in the net for him goal-wise. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty good pickup. We'll see if he stays there. Uh, his leaning before being traded by Calgary was towards playing for an Eastern-based team. So we'll see if this run with Vegas changes his mind. And maybe if they go on a long run in the playoffs, it'll help. Uh, Tomas Hurdle has played two games since coming back from injury, one assist, and he's a minus three over those two games. As I always say, pl plus minus to me in isolation when you're looking at just a few games, it can tell you a little bit. And what that tells me is Hurdle probably having a bit of a struggle with, with a new team, new systems and setups and everything, and it's understandable he would have some struggles out of the gate. So you're hoping that that all gets straightened out before the playoffs. Now, their power play last year was at 20.29%. This year it's at 19.1%. So it doesn't sound like a huge drop because it kind of isn't. Uh, there are times where I feel like looking at power plays and penalty kills can be kind of overrated unless it's an abysmal power play or a fantastic power play. So I don't think going from 20% to 19% means, well, that's it, they're done. And their penalty kills gotten better. Last year they were at 77.44%. This year they're at 79.7%. So... Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Now, these numbers here I pulled from the NHL site. These numbers I pulled from Hockey Reference. Hockey Reference goes into a little more uh, detail with the percentages than the NHL site. But you guys get the point. It's improved this year on the penalty kill. The power play has dropped. What interested me was when I was looking at goals for and goals against. Because when I was putting this together, I thought, okay, defensively and goaltending-wise, they have to be worse than last year. Kind of. So last year they were 14th in goals for. This year, if you're looking at goals for per game, because not everybody's played the same amount of games, so you have to go by goals for per game, they're, they're 14th. So it's the same as last year. Goals against last year, they were 11th. This year, uh, they are 12th in goals against per game. So it's right around the same. It's, it's not a huge difference. The biggest difference to me is they were the number one seed in the West last year. They're the number eight seed in the West this year, right? Um, meaning the only reason I have one and eight is because they wouldn't have home ice against anybody currently. Again, they're only one point behind LA. So if the Kings stumble a little bit and if, if Vegas gets a couple of wins here, then the Vegas Golden Knights will likely find themselves against either Edmonton or Vancouver. Uh, that's why I have likely because there's still that chance Vancouver falls out of first in the division as well. And if it's Vegas against Vancouver, I have no idea what to expect. Those teams met in 2020. That was a series that Nobody gave Vancouver much of a chance in, and their goaltenders, uh, first Markstrom and then Demko, had something to say about it. So if Demko's back and healthy in time for the playoffs, who knows? Uh, now, last year's numbers for their goaltenders were better than this year's. Logan Thompson, 21-13-3 with a 9-15 save percentage. This year, 23-14-5, but a 9-07 save percentage. And Thompson's looked shaky at times. Aiden Hill, 16-7-1 with a 9-15 save percentage last year. This year, 18-11-2 with a 9-11 save percentage. And when he comes back from injury, he hasn't looked quite 100%. Uh, he had a rough night last night, but it is Edmonton. Although it was Edmonton without McDavid, they're not less dangerous without McDavid. Uh, we've seen over the years when they don't have McDavid, Dreisaitl's perfectly fine with stepping into that role of, of driving the offense for the team. So... I do wonder with Vegas whether or not they're going to get the level of goaltending this spring that they got last spring that got them all the way to a Stanley Cup in June. Now, when we look at that run in June, one thing I wanted to look at was, okay, so let's just say they're going to start every series on the road. Let's just go down that, that, that path. They will start every series on the road. Does that necessarily hurt them? Uh, based on last year's numbers, if they can play this year like they did last year, maybe not. So... Uh, against the Winnipeg Jets, they won that series in five. They were 2-1 and one at home and 2-0 and oh away from home. Again, Winnipeg at home, it can be a challenge to get wins at home. I, I don't know that the whiteout works. Uh, then against the Oilers, uh, six-game series, they were 2-1 and one at home and 2-1 and one away from home. So, again, didn't matter whether they were at home or on the road, they were equally effective. Against Dallas, they won that series in six. They were 2-1 and one at home, 2-1 and one away from home as well. Uh, and then against the Florida Panthers, they won that one in five. They won all three games at home pretty authoritatively in game five as well. And then they were one and one in Florida. So overall, they were nine and three at home last year, seven and three away from home. And they won game one in every series except the one against Winnipeg in the first round. So uh, last year, they showed they could win on the road. They could win at home. But all those game one series. So against Edmonton, Dallas, Florida. Really, it, it set the tone for the rest of the series. You get that game one win, team's trying to play catch up with you, 
And so it does feel like having home ice advantage matters from that perspective. We have that debate all the time about how much home ice advantage matters. Uh, all of this right now, all this discussion, of, hey, this team could still finish first, this team could finish here, this team. And then once the playoffs start, we're like, yeah, it didn't really matter, did it? So I, I don't know that Vegas can repeat. I know that there's enough pieces here still from last year's team. You can't count them out. But I, th I think with the way Dallas has been playing lately, I'd be very surprised if Vegas could knock off Dallas. The way Edmonton's been playing, I'd be very surprised if they knocked off Edmonton. Uh, and then if they played against Vancouver, that's where it's maybe. That's that one I would I will grant you maybe with Vancouver. Again, it would depend on how Demko feels. It would depend on whether or not the Canucks can start getting a little bit of that puck luck they had in the first half of the season. Uh, but for Vegas, they haven't been getting that puck luck lately themselves. It is just really interesting to see how a lot of the numbers really uh, across the board are very, very similar to last year's team for Vegas. But they've gone from the number one seed to the number eight seed. They've gone from having home ice all the way through in the West to not having home ice at all. Um, so we'll see. It's going to be fascinating. Last year, they were road warriors during the regular season. They were fantastic on the road. Uh, this year, it's been a, a, a little bit more of a challenge for them on the road than last year, but the record's been a little bit worse than last year overall. Uh, but the underlying numbers tell you this is going to be a dangerous team. I think they'll be tough to get out of the playoffs. Uh, but I, I don't see them winning the Stanley Cup again. But how many people picked them at last year's Stanley Cup at the start of the playoffs? Not very many. So it will be interesting to see how they do this season and whether or not they can repeat. Uh, we've seen repeats in 2020 and 2021. We saw a repeat in 2016 and 2017. So it is possible. We've seen two examples of that not too long ago. Uh, will Vegas be the next one that repeat? And if they do, this is going to be nothing short of Vegas magic. This this would be the ultimate, they want it for Vegas reasons. Because I, I know people talk about the stone thing a lot, and that can be very distracting. That's why I put stone in a different color on the board. Because I know that's the talking point, but they they don't scare me like last year. Uh, that being said, when they're down in the third period, I do still expect a comeback. Doesn't matter who they're playing. I'm kind of like, yeah, Vegas is down in the third. I like their chances. It's the weirdest thing. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Can Vegas repeat? And then if the answer is yes, they can. The answer to the next question, will they repeat? Yes or no. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. We're a little over a week away from finding out who, you know, everything of who's going to play who. And really getting into that playoff hockey. And I'm really excited about it. I think this year's playoffs are going to be awesome. And so we'll see how things work out for Vegas. Should they get there? Because again, they haven't got the little X next to their name in the standings. They haven't clinched. And St. Louis is just winning enough games to at least raise, not necessarily doubts the wrong word, but just, just, to, just to make things interesting. Good way to put it. Make things a little bit interesting in the West. So let me know your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for all your support as always. And if you haven't already hit like and subscribe, please do. Channel gained over 100 subscribers yesterday. So awesome. Welcome and enjoy. I will talk to you again soon.